Hi, welcome to Gresham High School. I'm Richard Higgins. I'm gonna give you a tour of uh, Gresham's brand new high school. Shall we go? So come with me. So obviously we bypassed the security checkpoint, which is the front uh, desk. During uh, school hours, these are open, but uh, during the day, everybody checks in at the office. Uh, and you're greeted by a number of staff and also students within the school. Once you're through security and sign in, you come through this door and you come into the primary entrance to uh, the classroom tower to the left and uh, the support and CTE and student services to the right. So let's start this way. In the planning process, the school district did have a set program uh, and a curriculum of exactly how they wanted to deliver high school uh, teaching and learning. It is a, a comprehensive program. The story really is about not only the programs that they offer, but the school itself and its signature relevance in the community. It was a historic building. It had lots of character. Unfortunately, it was really unsafe uh, for the uh, current enrollment and population. So what we've tried to do with the design is to capture as much of the original school in its character and flavor and feel. And one of the ways we did that was to preserve some of the artifacts uh, that were on the original building. And so this is a very large school. It's a three-story classroom tower. And so we had, how do you get daylight into the classroom? Well, obviously a, a central courtyard. But what do you put in the courtyard other than great daylight? Well, what we did is we took the, the muses from the front, front of the original school and surgically removed them and replaced them in the courtyard. So what you see are the four muses that were on the front, just incredible formwork of the bas relief uh, figures of the four muses who were all symbols of theater, dance, music, poetry, and comedy. And so these were a natural fit for what goes in the courtyard. So this is central to the school in daylight, even on this crossing, uh, passing uh, corridor, and it's on all three floors you have this access to daylight. This, the design is pretty straightforward. They are organized by departments. Um, the, the only constraint we had was that they wanted to maintain their science programs in close proximity. And we ended up stacking them on all the levels such that you had the utilities. This middle part, you do have uh, some of the science classrooms with good transparency and looking into the, si and the science classrooms and also the opportunity to display some of their work. And they're stacked on all three floors. Off to the right is the black box theater so that when, you, when they're having a smaller performance, more intimate performance, they can actually, the public can actually use these two doors that are right off of uh, the black box theater, separating the rest of the school by a set of doors. So the theater itself uh, is um, an expression to the community that this is their high school. Um, almost every person with whom we met in the community would reflect on their experience at Gresham High School. And so this is really important to them. We did salvage some things beyond the really nice pieces like the uh, muses. Salvaged some of the seating from the original uh, auditorium. S the ticket window articulations that were again uh, believed to be crafted by some of the artisans that finished up their work at Timberline Lodge. And at night, these panels, these blue and gray and white panels are illuminated and can be seen from outside. Again, kind of announcing the activity inside uh, the school um, at night. They have a very robust uh, speech and drama program here at Gresham High School. So this was really an important element to their overall planning was they have nighttime performances and they wanted to announce them in a very, very special way. So the auditorium um, is 550 seats. This is smaller than what they had before. Um, but um, they really rationalized the, the size of the house and how many performances they had to do compared to the uh, features that they had on the stage. This is a contemporary uh, high school auditorium, full fly loft, uh, orchestra pit, uh, removable top, 
full AV upper control room, which is accessible from the upper floor. And then you have a mid-house uh, control area, which is accessible to anyone in a wheelchair. So again, they're trying to address the entire community of Gresham and those who may have disabilities who still want to participate in the theater program. So here's the back of house. And this is where you see there's dressing rooms for boys and girls, a sewing room, and then down at the end, there is the scene shop with an overhead door and direct access into the back side of the stage. Here we are at the Auto Tech, which is really a very nice space. It's an a, a incredible improvement over their previous space. Not many sky, high schools have an Auto Tech program nested in their high schools. Many schools have gone to uh, a learning center or training center, but Gresham High School has a robust program. Directly adjacent is their, their actually their training room, which is direct, has a direct connection so that they can do mock-ups and simulations in the classroom under the instruction of the teacher and then migrate directly into the shop area itself. So the remainder of the, this classroom wing is general education, um, but what it allowed them to do is to actually move the entire student body into a three-story tower while the remainder of the school was demolished and rebuilt. So this is a multi-phase project, but the critical phase was phase one. They started in March of 2018 to tear down um, the older portions and to build back the new, which means by September or fall of 2019, they had this building up three stories so they could move all the students into this wing while they did the other work. From this wall, from this wall to what this direction is north is the phase two, which includes um, the office, counseling, career tech ed programs, library, commons, and the connection to the original building. In this plan, they left about 20% of the original building, which is primarily athletics and a cafeteria. So the design had to fit those in, into um, the plan and actually expand those programs. Because one of the key elements was the cafeteria was just too small to be to act as a commons. And there wasn't any single place for students to really congregate. So the plan does create an event lobby, which is directly adjacent to the gymnasium, which is an extension of the cafeteria. Now they really have a commons at the center of the school. So let's go that way now. Right here at the front door, access to counseling uh, and all the counselors, access upstairs to the career tech ed. These next two rooms are uh, a common element in high schools. This is the uh, uh, careers, uh, career program. Um, where students can access both careers and uh, post-secondary education opportunities. It is transparent such that students recognize that there's a resource available to them and some of their friends might even be using it, so they should try it out themselves. This room is the Sun Room. It's a Sun program which offers after-school uh, programs to students. Um, and again, it's transparent so that everybody can see what's going on and it, uh, really inviting people to participate. It's also on the main court where there's a lot of activity. The students from uh, the classroom tower into the commons, which is, uh, which is straight ahead. Community partners again, the, uh, uh, the school has a strong connection to a lot of different community partners and services uh, because of their very diverse uh, community. Uh, and they wanna offer those programs on a regular basis. So they're actually creating community spaces for them. The classic locker bay. There's 1,800 students in this school. Uh, this isn't enough lockers for all of them because the lockers aren't as important to uh, students as it used to be. They carry backpacks, but the school still wanted to offer it uh, to students who wanted it. Um, so this is the first time they've had locker bays anywhere. They believe that there are enough lockers that they can accommodate at least a couple of freshman and sophomore classes. So this is critical. This is the connection to the existing school. This is a relatively new addition, uh, 2008. So to remove something from 2008 and rebuild it just didn't make sense from a budgetary standpoint. 
So we just made it part of the, of the uh, design. Uh, this is an quarter, open quarter down to the athletic area and, and upper level classrooms. Hey, so this is how it connects just in a practical standpoint um, is the rest of the event lobby. So you can see what it will be, but you look up into the, up at the ceiling, you can see it's going to extend all the way out to the streets. So because it's so large, lots of connections between all of the buildings horizontally, but also vertically. So this is a monumental stair in the space that we believe will be incredibly active because everybody can come here and congregate. The entire 2,000 students, student body in another day and age could be able to come here and congregate. And now you can see the vastness of this space and really how many people will be able to accommodate. So a couple features of the artifacts that we saved there in place are these boards that are hanging from the ceiling. Those are uh, bench seats from the original gymnasium that have been salvaged and, and painted and are now suspended almost like a mobile. And then the vertical lights in between to kind of work in between those, the horizontal uh, boards. Those boards are gonna be on the uh, sidewall of the uh, gymnasium as well. And we'll go all the way down to the other end. So very simple and inexpensive uh, design feature to really finish out this mammoth space. Another very important program element to the gymnasium addition was this weight room and directly below us is the girls locker room. The girls locker room in the previous building was undersized and so the school district made a commitment to create a new girls locker room below but up here is the new weight room that is used by everyone. The old weight room was about half the size and it was outside. You had to cross over a quarter outside uh, into another building. Now it's all consolidated right here in one spot. And they set it up that it has multiple uses. Another piece that kind of extends out beyond the weight room itself is this track. It's now a 50 meter track so they can actually practice sprints right here in the gymnasium. And it's still at the top side of the bleachers. So you can see all the striping is underway. Uh, they've got all of the court uh, games that you would uh, expect in a high school. Uh, pickleball, basketball, badminton, uh, volleyball. Uh, this is a multi-purpose gym that is twice the size of their, or their old gym. And uh, it's really gonna be quite an event space, um, especially with the new vestibule outside. On the upper floor, a lot more transparency, uh, career tech ed programs that when in function uh, actually are engaging students and inviting them to, be, to come in. Um, more traditional, they have a, a very strong graphics art program. Again, those programs are set up such they can display their work uh, and really, show, uh, really feature the student's work. And these are all on this upper level that is away from the main uh, circulation pattern for student services but this is the upstairs where it's still accessible and communicating between the second floor and the commons. Directly on the other side of the hallway uh, is the media center which has the best view in the entire school. It's all looking east so on a great day you'll see uh, Mount Hood. So on every floor this is the connector between the, the wings and you do look down into the courtyard, but what it's really important is that all of these hallways intersect, and they intersect in the same place on every single floor. So at every single floor, there is this kind of enlarged or expanded gathering area. Uh, yet, they haven't put any furniture in here yet, but it's big enough where students can gather. Now this is the second floor, so there's a lot of traffic that's gonna go across into the remainder of the building to CTE and the commons. Uh, so there's a lot of traffic right here. So what happens is there's people coming up and down the stairs, people coming across this hall, people going down there to uh, connect with the, uh, the event lobby and commons. So you need a little bigger spot or a little bigger place to, 
to, to gather and, and collect and gather. So it's been expanded out into this area, which is a perfect perch or overlook down into the entry vestibule. So you can actually see who's coming and going. Just imagine what this would be like in the morning as you're waiting for your friends. And just to set it off, we've hung the big uh, G in the lobby so you can see it, not from in here, but outside at night or in the morning when you're coming to school, it's illuminated by the light. So it's really kind of a cool effect that is a very simple solution that gets a, has a huge impact. Every discussion about Gresham High School really has to start here at the corner of Division and Main. The uh, city uh, really wanted a signature building at the entrance to Main Street. So we were more than happy to work with a, a signature building right at the corner um, that really announces that you've arrived in Gresham. And that solution is to put the theater. The angles are all very deliberate. Uh, it's a very long building, as I said, it's almost three and a half blocks long. And so how you break it up both vertically uh, and not break up the horizontal line. So in this case, the, the roof is pitched at an angle to kind of open it up bigger and to really make something special at the intersection of Main and Division. So, you know, it was very important to create a space off of the street. I mean, there isn't much sidewalk space, so this really needed a little, uh, an eddy in the stream, such as you could enter the building as crowds begin to develop on the outside. Um, really important to be able to see in, especially on performance nights, to really welcome the community in. Gresham High School in two foot tall letters, clearly visible at the corner of Division and Main, is a great announcement that you've arrived in Gresham. The community takes a tremendous pride in their high school, and it's obvious where you are when you pull up to this intersection, really announcing this is just one corner of a great high school. So the story goes that the, the mayor of Gresham, in reflect upon Gresham High School, always told the same story, which was he remembers as a child driving into Gresham and pulling on Main Street and going down in front of Gresham High School and seeing these huge bookends flanking the ginkgo trees. And so in this design, we brought those bookends back, reinterpreted them. They're not the same, they're bigger, they're taller, uh, but they still, again, they have that flavor, the feeling, the heritage of the original building, um, even down to the point where we've reused um, the inserts in the doors. Um, many of the elements are similar, they're not same. Uh, and at the top you see the four muses that uh, are replicas. We took the muses off the building, made rubber forms, and then cast new ones that fit into the overall module of the exterior wall. The three rosettes you see up there are actually the same rosettes that we took off the building and put them back. Um, so there's a lot of elements that we took off or replicated just to bring back that same feeling. The entrance and the, the building line was in line with that fence. And I'm gonna show you the sages that were actually on top of this Art Deco entrance. Um, that we salvaged and have brought down and made them gateposts into a courtyard in this area. So this, the sidewalk would lead you to the front entrance. Um, that's been replaced and this has become a kind of garden area around these ginkgo trees. Child development program, um, that's in this space right here. Again, it's integrated into the school. It's not a separate building. It is a safe location on campus and in great weather like this, you can actually go outside. Um, the Sages. Um, I think the Sages speak for themselves. They're colossal. Uh, how could we not reuse these, but where do you reuse them? 
Um, in this case, what we've done is we brought them down exactly in the same location, almost exact same location, as they were on the original building. And we've made them gate posts. I don't think anybody that looked at that building realized just how big they are. I mean, they're a good four foot square at the base in every foot bit of eight feet tall. So they are going to become gate posts and this fence is gonna continue over. So in this central courtyard, um, it really is a space they've never had before. Um, I could envision a grand opening event in this courtyard. This is great entrance for public events, but what about the main entrance to the school? The monumentality of the building is added by the theater. It's a big, big box, and that really adds to the notion that there's something monumental right here at the uh, intersection of downtown Gresham. So it's a right in, right out. So as you're coming down the street, where can you find the entrance? I think this sentinel right here explains it quite well that you need to turn in. It's 24 feet tall. It sure doesn't look like that big, but it needed to be that big compared to the uh, size of the theater adjacent to it. The parking lot for students and visitors is separated completely from the bus parking, uh, which has a drop-off area uh, adjacent to the cafeteria and also the front door. So this is the car entrance right in, right out, and the student walk entrance uh, from the neighborhood, adjoining neighborhood. So once you cross the street, you have a safe path to the entrance. How you integrate the existing play fields, all the play fields that they had really were all organized here on the east side, and all we did was just reinforce that. And there's a new outfield fence. Uh, it's a little taller because we did move the fence in a little bit. But all of those features are now still accessible and in close proximity to both the locker rooms and the PE athletic facilities. So those elements really work well. So if you look at the overall design of where all the parts and pieces are located, they still have good uh, proximity to existing facilities such as PE athletics and the play fields. And all we've done is nested a parking lot and bus parking in, uh, on the east side of the building in a safer location. Yeah, so of, of course, um, the goal is to improve the learning of our students in our community. Um, and with that learning comes all of the peripheral extracurricular co-curricular activities. So, um, you know, at the heart of the school are the classrooms and the science wing and the English wing and the math wing and the social studies wings. But um, layered into those is also our career and technology technical education classes, our fine and performing arts classes, and then athletics and activities on top of those pieces. And so while the classrooms, uh, the classroom designs and the furniture we put in them and the technology we put in them are spectacular, um, outside of those and complementing those classrooms are our auditorium, our new state-of-the-art gym, um, you know, to have a space for all of our student body to meet uh, on the interior of the building. It will be the first time in the history of Gresham High School that, that that can happen. So we're really looking forward to that and showcasing everything that we're doing uh, as a student body and a staff and a community um, inside of those spaces. So, so, so to me, it's students at the center of everything um, and being a part of the project from the beginning that has been the common thread that has occurred through the entire project from design to steel workers to plumbing, uh, the place is built for kids. And uh, we are really looking forward to opening it up for kids when we can. Looking at, you know, blessed with a hundred million dollars of the 300 plus million dollar bond that was passed by the Gresham community um, we essentially have seen 90% of Gresham High School um, renovated, replaced, and with that, you know, the, the safety components that exist uh, are, are the most, one of the most important components of it, just the overall visual 
uh, imagery and the um, anchoring of the historical perspective and context to what the old Gresham High School had and how those historical artifacts and components were woven into the design of the new Gresham High School. Uh, I think it hit all the marks on what it means for people in our community who loved the old Gresham High School and how it looked and what it stood for and uh, for our, our, our newer generation of students and community, what the new Gresham High School uh, is, is in look and feel um, and philosophy. Uh, my name is Terry Taylor, Director of Facilities at Gresham Barlow School District. We're now recipients of a $100 million project. Uh, it has a, you know, 51 classrooms in our classroom tower. We have a brand new auditorium. Uh, that's really built for uh, not just performing in, but actually getting performance, getting graded, and open to the community. Um, that was a, a very awesome piece, but it's also a corner to the community. As we look at it, this hundred million will never be spent again in Gresham. Um, from our standpoint, we get a chance to have a new gym, new classrooms, new performing arts, and um, really from my standpoint, it's a uh, new technology and just the infrastructure. I can provide the electricity to the classroom. We can provide heating and ventilation where honestly it was challenged before. Uh, we have state-of-the-art mechanical system that I'm, I'm very excited about, but that's through being able to make those right decisions in the right places with a great team. Uh, so we partnered with BLRB Architects. Uh, their leadership in working with our uh, educational leaders really became part of what um, uh, built this $100 million project, but built it as a success. So being able to team with those folks then brought us to Fortis. Fortis Construction, I will say, has done a great job of on time and on budget. Um, two years ago, they told us when this project could be done. So all of a sudden, we're two and a half years into it. They projected out, yes, those two and a half years, but we just didn't believe that they'd be so spot on. And they really give that accolades to the architect. and. The, the team of architects that uh, BLRB had here was uh, really the design had to meet the educational intent, but it also had to be a good set of drawings to be able to be on time and on budget. From an owner standpoint, we have one chance to get this bond right. Uh, having it on time, on budget for this community that really is stretched. Um, financially, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a, in a, in a blue collar community and with that, Gresham really is the heart of that to get a chance to be able to have that, to see where we were in the, you know, 39, 40s construction where the WPA work, we were a monument to this area. We, we, everybody that drove through here said, hey, I went to Gresham, or I was in that area. Um, that piece of it right there is so nice, but um, there's a tradition here, and BLRB's work, be able to bring some of that tradition from that WPA work into this project, you'll see that throughout the building whether it be in the courtyard with um, some of the monuments that were at the beginning of the building, um, to what was in front of the auditorium, which is now our muse garden in the courtyard. Uh, bringing that history really to forward to 2020 is a success to the team. To be able to bring that to us and on time and on budget is very exciting. I really appreciate it as a facilities director because now I know I don't have to use the baling wire and duct tape we have new systems in place. Sure, we're gonna maintain those and, and to keep those, but educationally, we've got sound educational facilities for all of them. Whether that be performing arts or the sports complex or the general ed, whether it be marketing, um, just excited to be able to produce that for them. And I was excited to be part of the project. Thank you.